So like I said, we're going to start out by talking about the functional classifications of joints. And there are three functional classifications I've already mentioned. Let's do them again. So first of all, there are the ones that have no movement. These are called synarthroses, synarthrosis for singular. These have no movement. Um, immobile or nearly immobile joints. Or nearly immobile. So examples of these would be the sutures of the skull. Um, you've got a synarthrosis between your sternum and man, um, slowly blanking. What's the word I'm looking for? Manubrium. I was going to say mandible. Right, right here. Um, these are things that our bones have come together, but no longer move. Then, and so in sin, that word, um, this root is actually um, means like together, but I think of it so in Spanish, um, sin, S I N, means without. Um, so I, without movement is, is kind of how I remember that. Together also makes sense, like they're together and can't move. Then there are joints that can move a little bit. Ampiarthrosis. Ampi means both. Um, so like ampiopathic. So they kind of they fit into both categories. There's in between. So this is some movement. A little bit of flexibility in movement is going to be important. Um, but it's not going to be a freely movable joint. These are going to be very stable still. So examples of these is your um, intervertebral discs in the, the vertebrae of your spine that need to be able to move some. Um, your spine can move a lot. There's different types of joints in there. These discs specifically are um, a little bit mobile. You still, they provide stability as well. Um, your pubis symphysis is a fun word. Um, in between your, your two pelvic bones um, is a ampiarthrosis. So there's a little bit of flexibility in there. It's not completely stiff, but it's not like your elbow. Okay, then we've got diarthrosis, diarthroses. These are freely movable, very mobile, um, and there's going to be a couple of different types of the ways they can move. So in different planes, so like uniaxial is, is a hinge joint. Um, biaxial means movement in two planes. And then multiaxial is like this. So multiple planes of movement. So there's still different categories of how mobile they are, but I mean, even your elbow, right? That's um, uniaxial. This is pretty mobile, right? Like that's that's a lot of movement. Um, what that's going to mean is they are less stable. Um, so as we increase movement, we decrease stability, and right, that's why your elbow joint is injured more often than your sutures of your brain, <laughs> of your of your um, skull. Also, it's why your shoulder, though, with the multiaxial, is more often injured than an elbow, um, although obviously it depends on what activities you're doing. So these are all gonna be um, all synovial joints, which are basically the joints you think of. So knee, hip, shoulder, fingers, um, et cetera. Okay, so those are the three functional classifications. Um, we will see the structural component categories and then use these terms to see how those structural classifications um, move.